Hi, we're Brett and Maria, and we are the Daily Wild Team. We want to show you what we've been building. A luxury tiny home on wheels for full-time living and travelling. So come on inside and see what we've done. Oh, we're excited, guys. We're so excited. Look at all this. Ready to be epoxied. I can't wait. So the room's been um, airing out, drying out. Had it up heat nice and high so we can keep the um, epoxy at the right heat. Um, taped up all the recesses, taped up underneath that. So basically we're just doing a layer of epoxy over everything. Got our buckets and everything prepped. Got our little suits to wear when we do it. And got little scales as well, because a lot of people make mistakes. They don't weigh the epoxy when they're mixing. This can really affect the, um, like the quality of it, so. Yeah, and then once this is all done, all the sides will be sanded. The top will be sanded with a 180 grit, which is a really fine grit. And then you go over it again with um, more epoxy. So yeah, should should look good. Um, that's what Maria's doing today. And I'll be helping her. Also finishing off some of the painting on the uh, fronts. And a bit of a rest day today. Because um, Sunday's my birthday and I want to... I want to... I want to have that day off, but I also want to like, spend some day, some of the day with Maria just chilling. I'm going to clean up the front room right now, because um, there's loads of hay everywhere from the rabbits, because they went crazy last night. They had a party with ours. Um, yeah. And then I'm just going to leave all this wood here, go downstairs, got to keep this room dust free. Maria is very, very particular about it being dust free. Um, yeah, so I'll go downstairs. Uh, Maria's got some parcels. I think they might be my birthday presents. I told her not to get me anything. She never listens. But, um, yeah, look. Look at the fronts. Look how nice they look. They look lush. Like, all nicely finished in the corners. The Dremel really does an amazing job. That wood filler, run sill, is so good. Anyway... Morning! Who are you talking to? Morning, Rachel! <laughs> oh, hot tub, I was in that last night. Right, I'm gonna go through the front room and get back to you guys, and I'll be doing some sanding on the fronts and then repainting. Um, and then I might actually pop out and get the green paint, get it all painted today. Weather's not the best, so I don't think it'll dry it out um, like we expect it to. But maybe just a layer of um, base paint on this. Um, primer, that's what it's called. See you in a bit. So chip the floor in to the extent where we need to buy a new flooring. So we need to look for new flooring. So that's what Maria's doing. She's having a look at the reviews of each product. Um, I'm going to have a look around here at this click flooring. Some nice stuff around here, Maria. That's some nice stuff. A bit too dark. Too dark. This one's nice. Yeah. Should we just get that for the buns? No. For the whole floor and grass. No. <laughs> right. We're gonna choose some wood, and we'll be back. Yo. Today has not been as busy as we thought. So we're having the weekend off because it's my birthday weekend. Um. Tonight, we're going to be doing the epoxy, and we're going to be putting the epoxy on our workshops that I showed you this morning. I'm also going to put a layer of the green paint that we've just bought from B&Q on top of the um, 
front for the kitchen to see how it looks compared to the old one to see whether we like it more and i really do think we will to be honest i don't know why we didn't use a tester pot and just whacked a tester pot put a tester pot on it but we didn't but we got the paint now we're gonna whack it on see what it looks like and hopefully it looks nice enough um i think it will we've also got flooring um eight pound a pack so the flooring was the same price as one of the trims that go around which is the same color as it which is absolutely fucking insane i don't know how we've managed it two packs of flooring eight pound each so we know overall we've paid 16 quid for our flooring and the only problem with it yeah instead of 66 33 quid down to eight quid how like all that was wrong with it is you know on when flooring goes together it's got like a little lip that it sits inside on the corner bit it's just the corner bit tiny bit has just been knocked off this wood's waterproofed the lot it's top quality it's not the good home stuff that you get from b&q it's a different brand which b&q themselves say is shit which b&q themselves the guy at the till is just like yeah it's, it's pretty poor like they had some stuff come back and it all bows up and stuff like that like a banana. Like a banana. But yeah, so we've got this flooring, we've got the trim. Um, we've got paint, some, what did we get yesterday? We've got some Velcro strips, so a quid each, like massive Velcro strips. That'll help with all like um, the stuff that we have in our cupboards and stuff. And all the plants, I put a big Velcro strip across that top shelf and then every plant pot will get its own individual strip underneath it on the opposite side of the Velcro. So it's just a big Velcro strip. You could put any plant pot up there as long as it's got a bit of alcohol on the bottom. Because um, it won't be used for anything else other than potentially a candle, but then it's too close to the ceiling, so no. So, yeah, like, those little bits. Velcro. What else? I've got some more metal clapping screws for the back doors. And for the side door, when I get to the side door. The side sliding door is a bit of a project in its own because I'm building something special there. Um, we also need to find a small window, not an openable one, but a small one. Maybe an openable one, if we could find one. But um, I might even get one of them long, thin ones. Um, in the middle of it, Maria's shaking her head, she says no. Uh, <laughs> so I'll probably get a square one. Um, box that off inside that door frame. Um, that's all going to be ply, I believe. Um or it could even be the white plastic so it's waterproof on that door and then have like a little notch where it comes down. There's a little thing that we're going to be building. Um, that's like one of the last projects we do on the van. Um, but yeah, <coughs> looking forward to it. Looking forward to finishing that side door as well. There's the rest of the stuff in the van. I've soaked that ward overnight for on top where the curve is for where the two pieces of tongue and groove connect soaked it in some water um, and I banded it so it's bent in the right direction so that when I put it in just go in and it'll dry in that nice 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 um, bend curve um, anything else not much more other than paint sanding and painting now guys and then fucking pretty much there I've got a couple of switches to put in. So all the light switches, so the, the mood lighting and the main lighting, um, I'm going to have a switch, so it's two gang. Well, it's, I don't know if it's two gang, I don't know the word for it is two gang, but there's a switch at the front and there's going to be a switch that takes it all the way to the back. So we're going to have a single switch added to the front panel and then a double switch added to the back where the bed is. And we're going to take an extra six wires down there lay them underneath the all the day bed and then around underneath the drawers or straight underneath the flooring because we're ripping the flooring up so it'll be underneath the flooring and up through the wardrobe and no wires will allow us to have it switched on and switched off on any of them and they won't interfere with each one so i can switch it on and switch it off and switch it on and switch it off and if i want it on i can switch it off with the other one so the circuit will always break when either one's switched which is pretty cool. So I'll, I'll, I'll wire that up. And they're two gold switches that Maria wanted. Um, and they'll be going into the wardrobe. So I've got a load of 12 volt wire for that because ordinary switches can be used for 12 volt appliances. Um, there's not much of a fuss there when it comes to it. Uh, it's not hard to do either. Uh, it's just a connection. So we're not really fussed. Um, so yeah, they'll go in. 
So a couple of little bits we're going to be doing, but this weekend is more of a relaxed weekend for us. I won't be filming this weekend. I know I said at the start I'll be filming every day, but there's just days that you just don't film, and that's my birthday and and the day before we're going to have like a little barbecue in the garden. I think I don't know yet. Have some chill time, but we've obviously got a pour epoxy tomorrow morning. Well, no, tomorrow evening. It'll take us half an hour to pour the second coat. Um, but we're pouring a coat tonight. Uh, and it should look sick. I can't wait for it to go on. And you're going to see it at the end of this video. You will see the epoxy being poured. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope you guys enjoy what we do. I know we're not doing it the most ideal way like everyone else does boxes at office and other. We've put all of our pieces of wood on a piece of metal. So it doesn't attach to it. And then we're going to pour the epoxy on. Brush it finely across. And let it go, let it soak into place. Then we'll take it off, 180 sand grit, it, and that'll leave it nice and nice and smooth for another layer of epoxy to go on. And then the final coat will go over. So we'll have about probably two mil, maybe three mil of epoxy across all of the pieces of wood. And then when that dries off, Christ, this is what we've been waiting for for a very long time is the epoxy to be done on the wood. It is just like the main bit that allows us to just move through this van at like lightning speed. So once that's done, that's it. They're going in around all the sanded, painted and wallpapered areas and they'll finish off the van. The floor then goes in and then one last bit of tiling across the front of the kitchen. We're fucking done. We'll be done. We're done, guys. I can't believe we're at this stage. Everything's in. It's madness. I've got to sort out a little receiver box for the linear actuators on the top because um, ours is damaged. I don't know how it's damaged. The linear actuators, they work absolutely fine. It's just the little box, the receiver box, keeps on tripping out. So I've got to have a look through that. Um, change the fuses, and it doesn't work, so I'm going to get a new one. And uh, yeah, it should be working fine after that. And that's to get us on the roof box. So that I'll have to go in. But yeah, all right, well, upstairs, into the bedroom, we're going to do the epoxy. Let's go. Cue funny little suits that we've got to wear. Peace. What the hell? <laughs> what are you doing, Papa Smurf? No, I'm being a speech person. Oh, okay. Speech. Stop it, stop moving, stop moving. It's not that crazy. Okay. We're all good. Right. right, we're just going to sit down in a minute and read through the instructions, double check them, and um, then we're going to mix all our stuff and put it on our wood. We're doing a coat, so we don't have to box it off. It's just a coat to go over. I've taped up the metal rods, and I've taped up the hole for the, the um, sink, and then that will be done. And at the bottom of that big hole there, I've taped the bottom of that so it doesn't all run out through the bottom. Quality is not amazing in here because it's off of that light on the roof, which is terrible. Um, so we will set you up on a time lapse and we'll crack on. Peace! We are about to pour the epoxy on the wood. Um, I've done absolutely everything you can possibly do to prepare for this day. It's taken about 18 months to get to this point, but we're finally here. Behind me is all my beautifully sanded wood. Um, it's been drying out inside for a good nine months. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely dry because it's a porous substrate. It needs this. It can be no. Um, moisture in it at all otherwise the epoxy won't cure properly um, we've got let me just turn I don't know if I can turn this around now I can't but on the floor here we've got all our mixing we've got a little um, scales and we've got a mixing pot we've got a couple of brushes where's the other brush it's just one brush okay we need another brush okay do you want me to get it on yeah, yeah. Um, and then what's going to happen down here is that after we've mixed our perfectly ratioed epoxy and hardener together we've mixed 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 in one jug and then you pour it into a new jug and then um and then it it eliminates the possibility that there might be any um unmixed hardener or unmixed epoxy left by itself in the first jug and then that means all you've got in the second jug is the mixed um the mixed ratio so we've got one two one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pieces of wood. 
Um, they're so beautiful. This is elm wood. Um, it's reclaimed, so it's quite porous. There's a lot of like little holes. Um, I don't know whether you can see. There we go. There's quite a lot of holes because it's obviously had woodworm at some point. Um, if there are any little woodworms left in there, they're going to be dead after the first sealing coat. So what happens now is we're going to do a sealing coat and it will look like it's gone straight into the porous um, surface of the wood. But that's fine, that's normal. Um, and what it does is literally like make a base layer inside all the holes um, so that you can put your see your um your big pour your main your main pour on top um, and it reduces warping if there's any moisture left in the um wood which should, now there shouldn't be at all but if there is it protects um the main pour from getting warped um and not curing properly which moisture will will prevent as well so i'm very nervous um <laughs> we've been preparing for a long time i've got my I've got some leggings on underneath and a little t-shirt and we've got our <laughs> suits on I feel like I'm gonna step out on Mars in a minute um, I'm very excited um, I couldn't have prepared better the wood's been um, sanded uh, with a 120 grit sandpaper um, finally after all the shit and crap was taken off like I said it's taken about 18 months to get to this point um, and we're finally ready so um, wish us luck um, I think Brett's gonna be filming um, the pool but this, uh, this is a sealing coat, as I said, so we're just going to be painting it on with paintbrushes, um, watching it go into the resin, uh, into the wood, and then we're going to be leaving the room very, very gently without disturbing any dust. So it's very warm in here, between 20 and 25 cent uh, uh, degrees centigrade. The windows are closed, the radiator's off because we don't need any dust coming up. Um, we've emptied the room, we've hoovered it, we've hoovered it again, we've hoovered it again. We've got our sheet down on the bed to protect... I don't know, because we don't want epoxy falling on the carpet. So, here we go. Okay guys, that time lapse was terrible. Didn't really get much, but look at this. How nice is that? We now have to get out of here so that it gets rid of all the um, dust particles from landing on it. Well, we're getting out. I'm so happy. <laughs> Let's get out of the room. I'm relieved. I can't believe this is done. This is literally finally, this has been 18 months in the process. I've got no idea whether we've done it right. The, this is the base coat. But don't look, move, look, move. look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. Look at that. I've literally got no idea if we've done it right, if we've done it too thick, too thin. I've got no idea. Doesn't matter. We've done it. We make mistakes, we make mistakes. Doesn't matter. Let's get out of this room. Yeah, bye. See you later, guys. Yeah, this, we check in 10 minutes. this is the end of the video after checking in 10 minutes, okay? We'll come back in 10 minutes, check for bubbles. If there's no bubbles, we can crack on, we we'll leave it, and it's dust free. Peace. Baby, how did it turn out? Well, I mean, so far. Good. <laughs> You're worrying people. Yeah. You're worrying people. Yeah, because I was stressed and panicky and worried, and we ran into a massive mishap in the beginning. Should I explain the story? Yeah, go on. Explain oh the story God. to everyone. So there's two ways to mix the ratio of epoxy to hardener. Okay, the epoxy to hardener ratio is 100 to 50. Okay, so it's two to one. You can either measure this by weight, which they recommend, or by volume. If you mix it by weight, it's the easiest method. You literally get some electric scales, put your pot on, zero it, and start pouring your hardener in, uh, your epoxy in, to whatever chosen ratio. When you finish doing that, you zero it again, and then you start pouring the hardener in to the exact ratio, okay? So you end up with whatever. Our chosen ratio was up to a litre. So we had 667 mils of epoxy and 333 mils of hardener. In theory, this should have been like a like one and a half minute process. In reality, we <laughs> we bought five kilos of epoxy and hardener. The kit is five kilos together between the big tub and the little tub of hardener. We were pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring out of the big tub, which is like two and a half kilos, isn't it? 
Yeah, it was, no, it was 3.36 kilograms. 3.36 kilos of, of epoxy. And all we needed was 667 grams. We were pouring and pouring and pouring. And I was looking at the tub and it was like half empty. But the scales only said like 250 grams. I was so like, our fucking like, scales were broken. So we checked the, the weight of the hardener, which hadn't been opened yet. So we knew how heavy that was. And the scales said 260 and it should have been like 1.6 kilos. <laughs> we were like, great, our fucking scales are broken. I broke down in tears. I had a little like crying fit. All the so prep. I talk like, over. All the hours of sanding <clears throat> I've done. Like all the room prep. Everything. All gone out the window. Plus we've wasted like 120 pounds worth of epoxy and hardener. It's... Because our fucking Aldi shit £2.50 scales. <laughs> so if you look back in the time lapse at the start when Maria's like. Uh, when we moved the, the, the camera down onto the side and you can see Maria like grabbing her face and then going back in and grabbing I'm her crying. face. She's crying. She's literally tearing up. But I was just like, Maria, stop crying. The water from your tears will fuck up the epoxy. <laughs> and then we had an argument because I was stressed and he was getting stressed <coughs> and then it was not good. So I just took over and I said, right, tell me, tell so, me, tell me the dimensions of uh, how, how many milliliters we need in volume to be able to mix this. So thankfully, Glasscast includes <clears throat> in their instruction manual for glass. So we use Glasscast three. We'll put it in the um, description. Um, thankfully, in the intro, um, we in the in the instruction manual it tells you how to mix by volume, how to mix by weight. Thank God, because if today we, we hadn't <laughs> found that part of the instruction manual that hadn't said you can also mix by volume if you don't want to mix by weight. Well, we do want to mix by weight, but we can't because the scales are fucked. So we're going to have to mix by volume. And then today, when we're in B&Q, randomly, just in the back of my thought, in the back of my head, I had a thought that maybe we should buy some extra little jugs. So we bought some little measuring jugs, like the ones you use in the kitchen, um, with the milliliters on the side, little handles and little spouts, plastic ones. And they were like three quid for three. So I picked them up. Thank God. God, because we already I, raced yeah. it. We already used the bucket that we were supposed to be using. <laughs> it was full of like three kilos worth of epoxy. epoxy without the hardener. So we had to empty that back into it. So whilst I was mixing the two together, Maria was emptying that back in, crying whilst breathe. emptying it. And she breathe didn't breathe. I watched minutes, her. So I was like... It was like the slowest thing I've ever seen, <laughs> but it was the most precise. I think multiple tears dropped down onto the floor. <laughs> It was like it was like our movie scene of like if you touch the side of this, it's gonna explode, kill everyone in the room. But that it was, was so stressful. It was it was like the end of the world anyway, for us. We think we've got it. It's so crucial because glass casts say if you mix it one rolls. or two grams out, it won't cure. That's how specific it won't cure the ratio. Fast this and stuff plant like is so fucking dramatic. Hey, be careful with it. Uh, it's about Look to how go dramatic in the bin. this is. That plant's about to go in the bin. I've it's on the I've floor. No, you don't put him in the bin. It's you supposed put to be him, up here. Put him in the garden. It will die in the garden. Well, then it will die in a bin. Anyway, we've done it. Yes, and are you it. happy with the result? We did it by volume. Um, I'm fairly happy with the result. Um, we had to go up there with a blowtorch. Blowtorch. A heat, a heat gun. gun. A heat gun, a heat gun, a heat gun. There was a tiny Except... pool in the middle of the board, wasn't there? That of the main piece, because it pulled in the centre where there's a tiny groove in there. Now that area we wanted to keep it because it was really nice and sanding it down and sanding it out would have been an absolute nightmare. So we got the heat gun on there, didn't we? And we, we did that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we thought it's some tiny bubbles, like the size of a, a pencil tip, tiny. But we thought, well, let's just give it a go. It says to very, very lightly go over with a heat gun. Um, and the bubbles will sort of pop up and then burst and then they'll they'll melt and that's exactly what happened and now it's looking gorgeous so that was about 10 minutes like after we finished pouring we did mm. that with the heat gun and then now we leave it and we don't touch it for like we probably won't go back until sunday morning now yeah so 48 hours on my birthday yeah well that's just how on my boring. birthday we're gonna go back in there and we're gonna finish this thing yeah so we don't leave it we we, we don't touch it we don't go in there we just leave it and it can cure and there's gonna be no dust so this this is basically this is basically what you have to do on a porous material. So you have to let it soak in so it can create that base for you to then pour that nice level of epoxy on, on the top to get that nice yeah. thick gloss seal on the because top. Because it's wood and it's porous, if you're yeah. using cement, you'd be doing the same thing. If you're using a non-porous material like um, like metal or plastic, then you don't have to worry. 
yeah. but we had to do this this base coat which they call the ceiling layer um, and it's absolutely crucial and then we've got to key it bubbles. and then we've got to key it after we've after that's cured yeah, haven't we've got we? sandpaper it so a 180 grit was it well 120 120 grit so it'll look a little bit grey um, we wipe off the, the dust from once we've sanded it with the 120 which we'll do downstairs so we'll carefully take it downstairs we'll give it a quick sand outside in the garden we'll bring it straight back up not with a machine but by hand because we then need to hoover away all the mess that's on it to then pour the epoxy because we yeah. don't want a dusty environment in there so we've got to do yeah, it that way actually, yeah. yeah um but yeah and it'll all look good so main pool coming on saturday yeah so we'll be putting that oh my god that's really bright is that why i look like yeah <laughs> we'll be doing that on the Monday, uh, Sunday, and it'll be on the Monday video because I'm not, I'm not editing and posting up on my birthday. I'm just not doing it. So I'll enjoy my birthday, for the love of my life, and um, we'll have a good time and get back to you guys on Monday. So this Yay. is the last video for the week. I hope you've enjoyed what we've done so far. We're trying to show you as much as we possibly can. Love in the comments. Thank you so much. Keep them coming. Um, keep them coming. And we'll reply to as many as possible. We love you all. Um, and Apart from the haters, we don't love you. <laughs> we love you extra. No, we don't. We love you extra. Maria doesn't. Maria doesn't. I, I love you extra because I thrive from hate. Oh Let's go. Goodness. Bring it on. Mom Bring it on. Um, like, Mom subscribe, Mom share this if you can. And hit the notification bell so you can see when the next episode's up. And we are going to be back on Monday. Ciao. Ciao. Mwah. Ciao, Bella. <laughs>